what's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're talking about 16 gigs of RAM versus 32 gigs of RAM versus 64 gigs of RAM. Is it actually going to increase performance for you in games? Now, all three sets of RAM are DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM with CL22, but the biggest difference between the 16 and the 32 and 64 gigs is that the 16 gig stick only has RAM on one side, and I believe this indicates that this RAM is a single rank. And the interesting thing is the newer processors, both Intel and Ryzen, really benefit when you have RAM on both sides. And when you have RAM on both sides of the memory module, you get a dual rank RAM module. And this basically increases the efficiency of the CPU in terms of how it can access the RAM when it's under load. For my testing methodology, I did all of the tests on the same firmware and drivers, and I did them all in one long session, basically just swapping the memory out in between each set of tests. Now I ran each benchmark result twice and averaged the results so I can get the most accurate data possible. Let's take a look at some benchmarks and see the performance difference. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the benchmark with the highest settings at 1080p, we got 101 FPS with the single rank 16 gigabyte module set. We got 110 FPS with the 32 gigabyte set, and we got 115 FPS for the 64 gig. Now I did record the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmarks, and here they are side by side. You'll notice that when the game is primarily GPU bound, we have increased performance on all three sets of memory modules, but then when the game becomes more CPU bound, that's when we're getting increased performance with the 32 gig and 64 gig sets of memory and we're getting noticeably higher FPS with the 32 gig and even higher with the 64 gig RAM module. And when it comes to GPU utilization, we're seeing more GPU utilized with 32 and 64 gigs of RAM, giving us improved performance the more RAM we have. Now I ran two tests on Call of Duty Warzone, the first one in the Battle Royale training mode with just CPU players. This allows me to have the most accurate and consistent frame rates possible. And you can see that with the 16 gig stick, we got 143 FPS. With the 32, we got 148. And with the 64, we got 151. That's a nice linear increase in FPS. Now for my second Warzone test, I tested in the middle of a downtown environment, and this is a very CPU bound area. And I did record my test as well. I'm gonna go ahead and play the footage as I talk about this test. Now with Warzone, you can see that we're utilizing more RAM, the more RAM that we have in the system. And when it comes to GPU utilization, we are getting more GPU utilized with both the 32 gig and 64 gig systems. Now the main downside to testing in a live server environment is that there's a whole bunch of players in the server and depending on how many players land near you, you're gonna decrease or increase your FPS accordingly. So if there's a lot of players to land near you, you might end up with lower FPS. And I think this might explain the benchmarking results. So for the 64 gig stick, we averaged 103 FPS. And for the 32 gig stick, we averaged 108 FPS. Now with the 16 gig stick, we had 94 FPS. So this actually gives us the biggest performance gain out of all of the games tested with a 15% increase in performance. That's pretty massive. That's what she said. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal considering the 32 gig stick only costs like 160 bucks. Of course, prices will vary. It's like less than 10% the cost of the laptop and increasing the performance of the laptop by 15%. And I think that is two giant thumbs up super worth. Next up, we have Far Cry 5. This is on the benchmark with ultra settings. And you can see that with the 16 gig set of RAM, we got 103 FPS, lagging behind even the GS66 Stealth with the 2070 Super Max Q. But once you've upgraded the RAM to 32 or 64 gigs, we're getting 110 FPS, another nice bump in performance. Now the results for CSGO are really interesting. Now for the 16 gig set of RAM, we got 284 FPS. With the 32, we got 308, and with the 64 gig, we got 304. 
And then when I hooked it up to an external monitor with 16 gigs of RAM, before the RAM upgrade, we got 432. And after the RAM upgrade, we got 457. Now, the really nice thing about the RAM upgrade here is that we're pushing the average frame rate above 300 frames per second, and this is a 300 hertz display. Now, for Flight Simulator, we really didn't see much of an improvement, nor did we see much of an improvement in Cyberpunk 2077. But if you average all six of these games up, you can see we got 100 125 FPS for both the 32 gig stick and the 64 gig stick with some games testing slightly better with 32 and some games testing slightly better with 64. Another important thing to point out is that we had 9 or 10 FPS higher for our 1% lows. This means that when playing with 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, the gameplay will appear smoother with less stuttering. But overall, it's quite clear that the default 16 gig single rank sticks of RAM that come with the Strix G17 is holding the laptop back a bit, and you can get significantly increased performance if you order dual rank RAM. Now, I would imagine that if you can get your hands on 16 gig sticks of RAM that are dual rank, you can probably also see a performance increase without having to actually increase the total amount of RAM in your system. So you might be able to save some money and still see improved performance, but I'm not sure because I don't have 16 gig dual rank RAM to test. Now, in terms of which RAM you can actually buy and put in your laptop, it'll vary a lot from laptop to laptop. Now, the Asus Strix lineup uses DDR4 3200 MHz CL22 RAM, and as long as you get to those specifications, it should work just fine. So if you wanna know if a RAM upgrade would increase your laptop's performance, you'll want to open up the bottom of your laptop and take the RAM out. Be sure to unplug the battery from your computer before you do this. If the RAM has memory modules only on one side of the RAM slot, then you can probably get upgraded RAM and see increased performance, especially in CPU bound game. Currently upgrading the RAM is not too expensive. It's going to range from about $160 up to about $260, depending on which set of RAM you end up buying. And there are some faster memory options out there, but I don't know if they're compatible with the Strix lineup. Okay, so I think that's everything. If you're in the market for a new RTX 3000 laptop, I did make a comprehensive spreadsheet talking about all of the laptops that are currently available. There's a link in the video description down below if you want to go check it out. I think a lot of you will find it very helpful when you're comparing different laptops out there. Okay, that's everything. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my reviews on gaming technology, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. I will see you in the next one. Brandon out.